fallen fruit from the trees. You know, as you get older, you tend to uh, make strange noises when you bend over. Now, I don't know whether it's me just getting old, which I am, I'm 57 now. I've had a rough one. I had a big accident in 2000, 23 years ago. I'm on what you would class as a chronic pain sufferer. Um, so, I was on a motorbike, Fireblade, RRS, Urban Tiger. Nicely modified single sided swing, swing arm, featured in performance bikes, Harris rear subframe and, and uh, seat pipes, just like the Ducati 916 at the time. And I went, I was coming back from Stratford upon Avon uh, on the Warwick Road. And at the base of a hill, I was um, coming around a bend. Okay, I was speeding a bit. About 110, I think it was. And uh, a lorry was uh, either doing a U-turn or pulling out somewhere. I don't know. I was in a coma for God knows how long two, three weeks or something. I don't know. Anyway, I hit the truck, bounced off the truck, and um, landed uh, on an oncoming car, which broke my back in four places. And uh, so, my injuries were two uh, broken legs, uh, two broken arms, two broken wrists, six broken ribs, uh, shattered left shoulder, uh, something else as well. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, um, so, um, and the car I landed on, landed on its bonnet, or its hood in American terms, um, saved my life. Because the impact, the, the crunch zone, or the soft zone of the hood, bonnet, um, stopped my back from uh, completely smashing into smithereens. But my doctors, when I woke up, uh, told me I would struggle to walk again. And I may lose a leg even. 
So, um, yeah, that, that was a hard moment. Really, really knocked it out of me, that one. In hospital for, oh, how long was it for? Seven months or something? Uh, yeah. So, so not only was I in a coma for three or four weeks, I was, um, when I, when I went under the knife, uh, I flatlined, apparently. So the docs are saying anyway, and I'm not going to argue with the docs, am I? Uh, so my family went through hell, I went through hell, and, um, Yeah, I'll carry on with the story just as in a second. So, where was I? Yes, um. When they went to operate me, um, I flatlined twice, so they had to revive me, which wasn't uh, very good for my family. Um, but then uh, I started to recover. Um, recovery was painful. My left leg was now uh 15 mil 14 15 mil shorter than my right leg um just through the crush damage uh at a later date that will need correcting etc etc which i'll go through again that was another a year off work to correct that leg but anyway I got out of hospital uh, six, seven months later in a wheelchair, couldn't walk. Um, regular physiotherapy and hydrotherapy just to build up the muscle groups again. And it took me another six months to learn to walk again, albeit with a limp. And uh, I'll tell you something, the NHS back then, absolutely amazing. They were fantastic. Uh, the nurses do so much, not just the nurses, the doctors, the physios, you name it. Even the cleaners, the cleaners were great, porters were great. It was great. Okay, it wasn't great. I'm just saying it was... Uh, they make your stay as pleasant as possible. Let's put it that way. So, there I am in a wheelchair. At my then girlfriend's house, which had been prepped for me to sleep downstairs. Um, I hated it. I was depressed. Oh, everything. Because you just, you're in constant pain and you don't know what to do. And then you're on the drugs to combat the pain. And then you're on antidepressants. I tell you, it's difficult coming back from an accident like that. But uh, I then decided, right, I can't, I can't do this. I have to try, I have to push it. So, I did, I pushed it. Boy, that was painful, pushing it. So, um, I was, uh, as opposed to physio once a week, I was there. I asked to go there three times a week. And I tell you, that was, uh, that was hard, painful. Uh, Hydrotherapy as much as I could get. 
because believe you me the hydrotherapy was amazing because it was a it was a bath <laughs> because i couldn't get into a bath i had to be hand washed so to speak from the then girlfriend and um yeah so that was good but it put too much pressure on my then girlfriend on both of us really because i was just a depressive angry kind of person at the time uh, with no direction even though my employers paid me all the way through full pay uh, at the time i mean i had i was off work nearly three years and they paid me 100 percent salary all throughout that three years that was including my recovery um, surgery from correcting the left leg but uh, it just put a strain on our relationship and it ended which is uh, a shame because you know every there's a reason for it and and at the time I couldn't deal with deal with any anything in my life other than myself being it selfish I know but I had to focus on me to get better so I bought another bike um, whilst I was learning to walk and at that time it was an Aprilia RSV 1000R the new one when it first came out and uh, B twin and I loved it the only thing that I had a problem with is getting on and off it but it promoted the movement in both of my legs uh, to feel for full movement like in you know when you get your knee down and stuff like that on sports bikes and on the track that was good for that well I'm not saying knee down I'm just saying just to promote the full extension of the uh, joints um, which it did and it helped help me build muscle and the only time the only way I could refuel was at a pay-as-you-go petrol station and uh, lean up against the the pump <laughs> and tippy toe on the floor and so I uh, there were short runs on it but good runs let's put it that way so yeah that was the start of my, my recovery and uh no i wasn't afraid of bikes uh after my accident because hey i've got no memory of it no flashbacks no premonitions of when i'm dead or you know the leaving body syndrome and stuff like that didn't have any of that the only side effect from waking up from a coma was an infatuation over the uh, time for some reason uh, that was just weird I just wanted to see a, a clock I said what's the time what's the time and I thought I was in America for some strange and bizarre reason oh, bugger. Uh, so and then I was I went back to work whilst I was um, using a walking stick and then uh, my doctor um, suggested because I was still depressed I was still in pain from my left leg because it was bent and short and uh, she says 
I can get uh, get you in see the orthopedic um, ward in Birmingham where they do all the children's injuries and stuff like that uh, to fix your leg and I just grabbed at the chance you see I asked how long will I be off what's the recovery period and she said seven months to a year so I spoke to my work and they said yep yeah, you need to be fixed go and get fixed my company at the time the company I work for were Accenture uh, previously Anderson Consulting but I tell you what without them I would have been up shit creek without a paddle financially at a loss so yeah uh, so the surgery was booked for June 2003 uh, and the they knew I was uh, like a mercy case and the doctor says right I'm doing this out of a favor and uh, to get you up and running but I want you to do something for me uh, we have 20 kids in that ward when I've just operated on you and put this frame external fixator on your left leg uh, they're scared and petrified I want you as soon as you wake up to walk through to this ward and chat with these kids because they've all got similar problems as you but yours was okay yours was accident related theirs isn't theirs is birth defects <clears throat> so I said yeah I can do that it's not an issue I'll help you as much as I can because that's what you're doing exactly for me what you're going to do for them uh, and uh, so in order to do the operation they have to smash my left leg below the knee with a literally a lump hammer to make uh, to, to, to fool the body uh, oh, well, this idiot's had another accident. Let's repair him. So it gets all the juices, creative juices going in the body uh, to start repairing it. So what they did, they smashed the leg. Smashed the leg. Uh, put some bolts and rods going through my leg. Uh, and fix them to an external fixator uh, which I had to adjust by a millimeter each day to promote the growth promote the growth separate the bone basically from each other and that uh, with the body doing its stuff it would um, start the fusing process. Uh, so that, after the operation, I'm, I'm all puffed out. So after the operation, I woke up an hour after, Doc came round, he says, are you ready to walk round? And I went, yeah, yeah, just uh, pump me through uh, some of them painkillers again. He, he topped me up with morphine. He says, right, now go and walk round there. And the ward was 600 metres away. Bear in mind, I just got off the operating table. So I did it, I walked round there. I was in agony, but showed a brave face. I basically showed no pain. Uh, 
is the Royal Orthopaedic Hospital in Birmingham. Fantastic. And uh, I walked around there, got to the ward and uh, chatted with the kids. They had a look at the frame and everything and asked me loads of questions. And I was saying, kids, get this done. It will change your life. Just like mine. I have words to them effect, that effect, rather. And, um, and that was it, really. I, I walked back and uh, got to my bed. And by that time, um, my mother was there. And she said, where you been? <laughs> I said, I've been walking. She said, you've just had an operation. I said, yeah, well, I said I'd do it for the docs and the kids. And uh, Doc came round to me, and one of the, the sister actually, and said, uh, that was amazing. That's, uh, we've never had such a response like that from, uh, from the kids. And uh, you've made their day, their family's day, and our day. And I said, uh, it's, my more, it, it, it's the least of what I could do. Uh, so yeah, after that, seven and a half months later, after twisting the nuts on the fixator, 15 mil of growth on the left leg and straightened, I was fixed. Okay, I've got a few nasty scars, but hey, I'm fixed. The only problem being, well, there's no problem really, is that I still suffer from pain in both legs. And that's, uh, well, not just the legs. I still, I'm still numb in the back. Uh, left shoulder still very painful. Uh, but my, it's my legs generally. And uh, I ended up going to a pain management course in Bath. And that place, oh my God, they teach you how to monitor your body and be mindful of what your body's doing. And any changes that are different going on in your body. Um, that was a two week course. And I tell you what, if anyone's suffering Within chronic, with chronic pain, get on a pain management course, but get it via the NHS because it costs then £6,000 back in, when was it? 2004, I think it was. So, another side effect of the accident, I can't get onto my knees because I can't, I can't feel what the knees are doing so I have to stoop when I'm doing you know stuff close to the ground but you know at least I'm uh, not too much of a cripple so there we have it that's giving you a rundown on why I'm like I am Anyway, I'm going to crack on with this. Right, that's uh, all of the um, all of the fallen apples. Now, all I've got to do is dispose of them. And because I can't be bothered to go to the dishettery, and we've got basically some land, it's just going to go down, dumped on the edge of our land, and they'll compost naturally. Right, let's get there.